Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday of the fifth week in Ordinary Time. Hope you're doing well. I guess you're getting ready for the little snow that's going to come down. Ugh. Well, anyway, I just want to talk to you about our preparation for Lent once, a while, once again. Today's gospel was very interesting. Remember the man who had a speech impediment went to Jesus and they were bringing people to Jesus to be healed and to be cured. And how beautiful is that? But like them, like today, it's not just to be a quick fix. We have to understand what it means to be healed and want healing. We have to the desire to turn the corner from our bad habits and follow the Lord Jesus. No wonder Jesus said, don't tell anyone about this. Hmm. Don't tell anyone about what I'm doing. Now, normally people would say, yeah, tell everybody. Keep on getting people around Jesus. But Jesus says, don't tell anyone about this because he doesn't want to be seen as a quick fixer. He wants to be seen as the Messiah, the Savior of the world, which means there is a commitment there. It's not just running to Jesus, quick fix, running away and going back to your normal way of life. That's not what Jesus is about. Jesus is about a whole sense of conversion. So that's why I said it's about Lent. It's about this whole understanding of Lent and conversion. So they bring the man with the speech impediment to Jesus and everyone's crowding around Jesus. And I was saying to the people today that the miracles are like sacraments, aren't they? Yeah, you know, in, a, in a way, they are like sacraments because they reveal the kingdom of God and they flood the person's soul with grace because they're coming with the right disposition, just like we do in the sacraments ourselves. And so in Christ's public ministry, those miracles were like a kind of sacrament. And the sacrament, the mystery of faith, is so beautiful when you receive it with the right disposition. When you're freed from uh, going for the sacraments for all the wrong reason. You have to be free from that. You have to go to the sacrament for the right reason, for a conversion, a whole renewal of a way of life. And that's what Jesus is conveying to us. That's what Jesus is conveying to the people of his time. But again, I wanna tell you about this conveying of this message. It passes through time and space. In other words, what Jesus done there and at that time, Jesus does now. Don't let the years and the location be a barrier or an obstacle. They pass through time and space, the miracles, the very presence of Jesus, the grace. It comes to us in the here and now. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, they're the three pillars of the Lenten journey. So the Lenten journey is about prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. You know why? Because it helps motivate us. See, we need to be on a spiritual boot camp and the drill sergeant, I hate to use that word, but the, the way of this whole boot camp is that Christ is calling us to a deeper sense of prayer, to a deeper sense of fasting, to a deeper sense of almsgiving. So by the time the 40 days are over, we're ready. See, it's only beginning. Everyone thinks it's the opposite after the 40 days is over. <laughs> after the 40 days, it just begins because it takes you 40 days to get yourself ready to get yourself ready and motivated to begin the lifelong journey. So to not go back to sinful ways, to be released from those sinful ways. So after, after boot camp, after the spiritual boot camp, you're like, I think I got this. 
That's why work on one area of your life. Foul language, nastiness, rudeness, unkindness, uncharitableness. Things that come from within. Not a candy bar or cheese steak. They're from without. They're from Wawa and all those places. Work on the stuff that's within, that's dangerous. That keeps us away from the grace of God. Now, don't get me wrong. I think we should sacrifice some type of food once in a while. And during Lent, it's a perfect opportunity. Don't get me wrong. But there's the, we have to work on within. Pride, covetousness, lust, anger, gluttony, envy, sloth. Hmm? Those are the things that we have to really work on during the Lenten journey. Now, how do we get there? By going into a spiritual boot camp for 40 days and learning about the sense of prayer and awareness of God's presence, learning about fasting, not only food and drink, but fasting from those things that we're giving up, pride, covetousness, lust, anger, gluttony, and sloth. And then charity, the almsgiving. By the end of the 40 days, you, you will be well aware and equipped of the graces needed for the lifelong journey. So you wanna make sure that that area of your life is gone. So you're not going back to it, right? You're leaving it behind as you move forward. So today's gospel, they bring a man who has a speech impediment to Jesus and he, he uh, puts his fingers in his, the man's ears and he spits on his hand and he touches his tongue. So why does Jesus do this? Why doesn't he just go, be healed, be healed? Because that's not what it's all about. It's the journey. It's the process. It's the yes for Christ. He is not a spiritual guru. He is more than a spiritual guru. He's more than a miracle guru. Of course. But what do you understand him as? Messiah, Lord, and Savior. How do you define that? As a quick fix person? Or as the true Messiah, the true Savior, the true Redeemer. That's important to know and to understand. So it's a complete understanding of that. As we move forward and as we approach the holy season of Lent. Everybody needs a break. Even the church gives you Sundays as a break. Even in the spiritual boot camp, you need a break. Sundays are mini Easter's, aren't they? That's why they never count as a day of Lent. You can keep it as a day of Lent if you want to, but I don't recommend it. The church is very wise in this spiritual boot camp. Give you a break for a little bit. When you're on a diet, Sometimes you need a free day. Now that doesn't mean you go nuts. In the same way that you don't go nuts on Sundays, you don't go back to, how about if you're giving up cursing? What are you gonna curse on Sunday? No, that's not what it means. It's just like, just take a break, breathe, be very conscious. But I, I think we need to really work on the capital sins, the seven capital sins for giving up something in those areas for Lent. Now, if you want to do the chocolate and the ice cream bit, wonderful, that's fine. But you're going to go back to that after Easter, right? Okay, pride, covetousness, lust, anger, gluttony, envy, and sloth, you're not going back to after Easter. So you need a good boot camp to get you so spiritually prepared and really fine-tuned so you don't go back to those areas. Do you see what I mean? This is the journey of Lent. 
Eating a bowl of ice cream is not going to throw you into hell. But your pride, your covetousness, your lust, your anger, your gluttony, your envy, your sloth will. They will. Your ice cream is not going to throw you into hell. So let's get rid of those areas that really are not good for the soul. That's what Lent is all about. Please join me in this time of prayer, this time of fasting. Remember, not only food and drink, fasting from other things, and almsgiving, your charity to many people. Catholic Charities, I just received my form and I made my gift personally and I sent it already. St. Vincent de Paul, maybe you know somebody in the neighborhood that needs to be helped. Charity, almsgiving, do what you can do for the good of others and give glory to God. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, but be open so God can fill you with his blessings. Tomorrow I'm gonna to talk about baptism and I'm gonna talk about confirmation and then I'm gonna talk about Holy Eucharist. They're the sacraments of initiation. I wanna to talk to us about all those things to help us really gear ourselves in preparation for the Holy season of Lent. Okay? God bless you, everybody. Have a good day.